Okay, so this is the start of the second week of my 14 day fat loss program. Today is actually Friday, so today I'm gonna go over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days. It's been quite a challenging week and I will explain why. So Monday, uh, after the cheat day, if you wanna call it that, if you saw my day five, six, and seven, let me just get this on charge. This battery is about to die and I can't even find the charger. Where is it? USB-C? No, I don't know where it is. I think it's in my bag. Hopefully the battery doesn't die. But there's not much to show. I'm just going to get straight into the week. So Monday, I didn't really eat much. Got up in the morning, 45 minutes cardio on the bike. Did some abs. Didn't have breakfast. Missed breakfast. Didn't need it. I was full from the night before because I had ice cream and all sorts. Went to the gym. I trained chest. After chest training... A little bit of stretching, a bit of mobility work. I'm having a little bit of an issue with my hips. They're very tight at the minute. I've got them fixed. Well, not fixed, but I know exactly the issue. The issue is that my lower abdominals are a little bit weak because my, my, my lower back is too strong. So they're not weak like compared to you guys or someone else. You know what I mean? It's just that my lower back is really strong. Therefore, my front needs to be just as strong. Therefore, it's causing a bit of an imbalance. I knew that anyway. It's one of those things, you know, sometimes even me, I know the issue sometimes and even I can get complacent. Even I can get a bit lazy sometimes and I think it must be something else. My, maybe someone can just iron it out, maybe just an adjustment. It could just click back in and I get a bit lazy doing the mobility work sometimes. But no, I have to spend a bit more time to do some mobility work. So I did the mobility work. I didn't do no cardio. Came home and I wasn't that hungry. In the evening time, I had what is on screen now, three chicken thighs. Now, if you're wondering why does this guy always eat chicken thighs, I go through phases of eating certain types of food. Sometimes it can be chicken breast. Sometimes it can be fish. At times it can be steak. And then I get bored of it. When I get a little bit bored of it, I think, right, what's next? It's just the way it is. And I know I kind of have certain things which I call the daily if you follow me, you'll know, depending on where I am, in what country, I always have like a go-to kind of meal. And that's just the way it is for me. Now, one of the things that I always have, which is my Kurdish lamb tikka, no, it's like, what can I explain? Lamb kofta and the chicken tikka, which is all grilled over the charcoal, just with a couple of like, bit of seasoning on it. It's not, not heavily seasoned, just very lightly seasoned. That is like my go-to meal every single day because it's easy, it's convenient. Remember for me, for the longevity thing, it's all about convenience. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going a bit too off track there. Monday evening, that's what I had. And at the minute, because I've been having these chicken thighs and chicken thighs have a lot of skin on it, it is a little bit more fatty compared to the chicken breast. So I don't have the nuts. Don't need it, didn't need it. If I wanted some, I would have had them, but I didn't. Plenty of water throughout the day. That was it. Monday knocked off. Tuesday, very similar Tuesday. Only difference being I had this meal, which I haven't had all last week. Well, I had once last week and it's on screen now, which is my local Kurdish restaurant. I went with my daughter. If you can see in the video. Yeah, she's in the video. There she is. And we just had half of that bread that's in front of you. As you can see, the half of the bread, I had that with the soup. And then as you can see there, it's very, I mean, I, if you're thinking, why is it so burned? Why is it so, so charcoal? I actually get him to do that. They cook the chicken really rapidly. They took it over the fire and it's just done within like seven, eight minutes. And I always say to them, listen, just cook it a little bit longer. I like that charcoal kind of grill. When I'm in Pakistan for a couple of months, there is a Nando's underneath my gym. And obviously I know the guy, so it's a bit different. I can't go to the Nando's over here and say, hi mate, who's the chef, right? Can you just grill it a little bit longer? You know, I don't want to be awkward in, in the UK, but over there I can do it. So I do actually get those guys to say, just chop the chicken breast a little bit more so and just grill it, burn it for a little bit. It's just what I like. I like barbecued stuff and you know, everyone has their preferences. So when you go to somewhere local like this, you can, you can ask how well done you want it. And when it comes to chicken, I know there's not like, it's not like steak, how well done you want it, but with chicken, I want it very well done. I just like it a bit burnt, a little bit crispy around the edges. It's just how I like chicken. 
It doesn't dry it out because they literally cook it over that charcoal. So definitely doesn't dry it out. That was Tuesday. In the evening, I had around about 100 gram of nuts before I went to bed. Well, I said before I went to bed, about two, three hours before I went to bed. And I deliberately eating less on these days because I knew what was to come on Wednesday. So Monday, Tuesday, I thought, remember my sole goal isn't fat loss here. I just wanted to recondition my body from eating junk every single day. I was eating crap every single day in January. So I thought, and same with February, and I thought, right, you know what? Just need to make a bit, a couple of lifestyle changes here and there, especially coming back from Marbella, eating all sorts of pizzas and garbage there every single day as well. I thought I just need to reset and I do this every so often. So Wednesday, I was down London shooting a podcast. So I knew there was no way I'm going to get to the gym. I did, however, get up in the morning, do my cardio, standard half an hour cardio on the bike, had plenty of water. That morning, I, when I, I say morning, not that morning, but before I, before I got the train to London, I had a massage with a good friend of mine, Seb, if you know him from Sheffield, you can hit him, hit him up. I can't even put a link down below because the guy's that busy. I can't get hold of the guy sometimes. So if you do want his contact details, contact me directly and I'll pass you forward to him. But he's very good. I don't actually know what he is or what he does. And he's not a chiropractor or anything like that. But he does me adjustments, he sorts me out, he tells me exactly what's wrong with me, and then I can kind of fix it. He shows me the exercises to do, and that was that. Then I drove to the train station, parked my car up at the train station, got the train down to London, met a friend down there. We did a podcast, that'll be live on his channel. I'll be sharing reels on mine as well. In fact, I share one of those reels today. That's been Friday today, I shared a reel. And down London, when I was down in London, this is what we had. Remember, I have not eaten all day. Sorry, when my friend picked me up, I, I, I will say, when he picked me up, he bought me a chicken wrap from Nando's. Just a single chicken wrap, because I said to him, I was starving <laughs> after the massage. When you have a massage, for some reason, it really knackers you out. You do need to eat a lot of food afterwards. But because I had only like half an hour to get to the train station and get on my train, I had no time to stop and get any food. So I was, and then when you go on the train, the food on the train, the train stations, pff, MNS, nah, I don't eat that kind. You, you know when I'm eating like food that's junk, I want to eat what I want to eat. You know, if I'm having crispy, if I, I've got in my head, I want Krispy Kreme donuts. I want Krispy Kreme donuts. That is it, nothing else. If I want ice cream, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, I'm going to go and get Ben and Jerry's ice cream, nothing else. I'm not one of those guys who sees something and thinks, oh, that looks nice, I'll, I'll go and grab that. It's never been me, so I'm not a big binge eater in that sense. I'm very disciplined, very controlled, but I knew Wednesday was gonna be an off day. It is what it is. Had the wrap, we did the podcast. After the podcast, we went for some food, and the food that we went for was Turkish, and I definitely made a video about the food, and guess what? The video's not here. I don't know why it's that. Oh, I do know why that is. Because, schoolboy error, I actually shared it on Instagram. So it was on a reel, on Instagram as a reel. If I can get it off Instagram and load it on this video, I will do it very similar to the Kurdistan, Kurdish kind of food that I eat. There was chicken, there was uh, the Adana kebab. Only difference was we had this other thing. Never had it before. It was like a, um, if you are South Asian, you know what a brata is. So it's like a heavily uh, oil doused chapati, if you want to call it that. And they wrapped the lamb in this in these pieces. It was beautiful. I've never had it before. It was the first time trying it. I'd seen it on my friend's snap a few weeks when I was like, when I come to London, we're going there. And he was like, okay. So we went there to, to eat. And then on the way back, this is where my nightmare started. I, on the way back, I went to Sainsbury's just to get some water and some nuts because I didn't want to eat train plane. Train plane? Train food again. Got to the train station at around 10.30 in the evening. My train back to Sheffield. I was supposed to land in Sheffield at 12.30, 12.40, just, just, just past midnight. Perfect timing. Get home around 1 o'clock. Could have had a shower, got in bed, perfect day for me. That, however, didn't happen. Let me tell you my little journey. So what happened was this. I'm on the laptop 
listening to the podcast that we just shot, editing it, doing all the reels and stuff like that. That's what I edit, I edit the reels. I thought, I've got two hours, I might as well kill it. So I'm editing. Didn't really pay time, didn't really pay attention to what was going on left and right. About 12 o'clock midnight, I'm thinking, why is the train going so slow? Again, I wasn't even listening to the, the announcements. I thought, I don't care. I'm on the last stop, bro. I get off when the train stops. Everyone's getting a little bit frustrated around me. I'm looking around thinking, what is going on here? This lady's having a go at somebody. She's getting pissed off. I'm thinking, what is actually happening here? So then I realized that we've been stuck before Leicester. We ain't even got to Leicester yet. I'm like, shit, this is like, it's going to be the, we were supposed to land in Sheffield like in 10 minutes and we're not even, we're still not even in Leicester yet. So I found out. They said, oh, uh, the trains broke down, some parts gone on it, and we're going to have to tr change trains. I was like, oh, fucking hell, I don't want this right now, but it is what it is. No point complaining about these things, you just have to stay stoic. Nothing is going to change how, so my mind is like, okay, I get off this train, I get a taxi, and I go to Sheffield. That is it. It's going to cost me 100 quid, 150, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, as long as I can get home for the night. It is what it is. I'm sure somehow the train company will compensate me or whatever, it's their mistake. I'll figure all that out later. I don't care about these things. I don't stress about these kind of things. I definitely don't get myself wound up to the point where I'm arguing with somebody else like some of the lady was doing. I just don't really give a shit about things like this. It's just life. But knowing my luck, it just happened to happen to me. I don't do public transport for this reason. I'd rather my car break down so I can be the guy who sorts the problem. Like if my car broke down, the tire went on it. I know how to fix the tire. I haven't got a spare tire, call up the RAC. I will figure it out. I am the problem solver of my life. What I don't like is me sat on a train. They're on the intercom saying, just bear with us. We are trying to sort stuff out. That is the most annoying thing to me. This is why I hate public transport. The only time I do public transport and that is on a plane. I can't fly a plane. So unfortunately, I'm in the peasant class with everybody else. It is what it is. Simple as. I can't do nothing about that. And if I want to try to travel around, that's the way I do it. But trains annoy me because trains always seem to be breaking down. Now, when it comes to taxi services, same again with taxis. I try to ring my mates who are taxi drivers and say, yo, this is when I'm arriving. I need to go to London. I need to go here. And sometimes I'd rather just pay for it. But on this one occasion, my friend said, it's so easy to travel on the train. It's just two hours. Just come to London and fly back and you'll be perfectly fine. I was like, you know what? That sounds all right. I'll do it. Anyway, another hour's passed. It's 1 a.m. now. They said, the train is going to, we're going to roll the train to Leicester. And I'm like, if you can roll the train to Leicester, just roll it all the way to Sheffield. But look, I'm a train expert. It is what it is. Roll the train to Leicester. They said, from Leicester, you got to get off the train and catch another train to Derby, which takes half an hour. So, oh God, so we got off this train at Leicester, caught this train from Leicester to Derby, got to Derby, and when we got to Derby, they said they was going to get us a coach or a taxi. And I was like, ain't no way I'm going to get in a coach. I, by this time, it was like, what, half two o'clock, half two in the morning, 2.30 a.m. Everyone's really tired. Everyone's really frustrated. I'm just like, yo, just get on with it. Whatever it is, it is. We'll figure it out. Got to Derby, they said, there's no trains, so no coaches at that time, sorry. We're going to get you a taxi each. It is what it is. So I've seen a load of taxis parked up outside. I knew they were all booked. I've been a taxi driver myself before. I knew you guys were all booked. I got into like, one of the further taxis down the road. Like, is that, is that just turned off? Is that what's just happened? Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. I need to charge that. See, I've not been sat here for a while. I'll charge that. Hopefully, you guys can still see me and everything still looks kind of professional. Got in a taxi and the guy, uh, the guy was from Pakistan. I had a good little natter with a guy. He was uh, telling me stuff about Imran Khan and we was having a good old whinge about Pakistan because it's in a bit of a crisis at the minute. But that is a, another topic I don't want to get into. Got back to Sheffield train station almost four o'clock in the morning, got in my car, bombed it home, got in bed. It is what it was. It was a long day for me. Now, because that was such a long day, Thursday, I got up really late. Got up really late on a Thursday and I thought, oh, I'm a bit knackered today. What am I going to do today when it comes to food? Again, discipline, mindset, no problem. It is what it is. I'm just going to just chill. I'm a little bit hungry, but it is what it is now. Got up in the morning, had my standard breakfast of eggs, four eggs with maple syrup on top and 50 grams of nuts. That was it. Was about to go to the gym 
And then the beast from the east came. And if you guys don't live in Sheffield or from familiar with the UK, it is a snow, basically snow. Now, I know most countries are well equipped with snow. The UK melts down. Literally, the UK is on standstill when it comes to snow. Like today, I couldn't even leave the house today because my driveway is kind of like quite a bit off the road. And credit to my neighbours, uh, you know, they've cleaned the driveway and everything. But if I get out there, the gym was shut. So that gym was shut. The other gym I go to was shut. I'm assuming the gym down the road, which I'm not a member at, would have been shut as well. So I thought, you know what? It is what it is. We'll allow it. These things happen. What can we do? So I, so yeah, yeah. So that was so Thursday. I didn't go to the gym. I had my eggs and I had my eggs and oats in the morning. So eggs and oats, eggs and maple syrup. I don't eat oats. And in the evening, I had a meal, which looked like this. So as you can see on the uh, on screen at the minute, that's a whole baked chicken. Again, so juicy, so flavorful. I had around about half a, half the breast with the leg and the wing and just basically half of what you can see there the potatoes i had around about if i used to count those potatoes i had about four potato halves so two full ish kind of potatoes as you can see in the video and that was it for thursday night and yeah so so today's friday today's the, 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 today's diet i'm going to explain in the next videos but that was thursday so wednesday was a hectic day thursday i didn't let things slip I knew Wednesday I was going to be out and about, so look what I did. I made sure on Monday, Tuesday, I had very low amounts of food to compensate myself ready for Wednesday, because Wednesday I knew I was going to be a little bit off plan. I knew I was going to be out and about. I knew I wasn't going to be able to get food, and I didn't know I was going to get stranded, and it was going to take me six hours to get home from London, and I'd end up getting home at 4 a.m. It is what it is. Yes, did I want to eat off plan? Yes, did I want to have like some junk, well, did I actually not? I say yes, but the actual reality is no, because when I, like I said, when I'm out and about and I see a vending machine and I think, do I want the Snickers? No, what do I really want to eat? Well, I like Krispy Kreme donuts, so I'm not gonna get a Snickers right now, I don't want it. And I haven't really looked forward to that. So like this Sunday, I might want to eat waffles with ice cream. So I'm looking forward to eating waffles with ice cream. If I'm not looking forward to eating something, I'm not one of those guys who just thinks, oh yeah, chocolate, I'll just eat some chocolate. Because every time I've had that chocolate in the past, if I've been dieting for a show, or if I've been dieting for a holiday, or if I've just been dieting to get back in shape, the second I have that chocolate, you think, was it really worth it? Did, it, did I really need it? Has it actually done any benefit to my life? Other than I've kind of like messed up on my diet, that's about it. So I always remember those kind of moments. I always remember those things. I think, well, was it all worth it? And I'll, I'll remember a good time when I competed. And when I competed, the last few days, I needed to get down to body weight. I was a little bit overweight in the sense for scale weight. I was ripped, but I was just a bit overweight for my weight category. I had to drop a couple of kilos, managed to lose the kilos, and I was really depleted, really tired. And the next day, so you know, that, that evening after the show, I ate so much food thinking I wanted to eat this food and I felt horrible the next day, disgusting. Not that I felt fat and I thought, oh my God, what have I done? I've got, I've got crazy, I've lost all my, my, my conditioning. No, that was not what it was. I looked better. Obviously, I filled out, I looked amazing, but I felt shit. Went to the toilet a few times, felt a bit disgusting, felt bloated, it was burping, didn't like it. So I learned that lesson back then knowing that if I'm just gonna eat to fulfill my gluttonous desires, all that is going to do is make me feel shit further down the line. And then it's a never-ending pit you cannot fill because you just eat one thing and you think, I haven't had that for ages, I'll have that. I haven't had that for ages, I'll have that. And you just go on and on and on and it never ends. It never ends because you can eat shit for weeks and months on end thinking this food tastes good, this food tastes nice, that tastes nice. For what purpose? I would rather be in shape, look after my health, take care of myself, that is more important to me than having a piece of cake or having something like a burger or that food. You know, when people like, it's funny because I see a lot of videos online and there was a video recently about, there's a, there's these guys in the line and they're Africans and they're tossing this bottle, they're tossing this bottle in order to, to sit at the table and eat food. 
and they toss the bottle and the guy who, who made the bottle land, you know, when they make the bottle land like that, I don't know what game, I don't even know what the bottle, the game's called. They sat down and they were eating like this, just crazy amounts of food, shoveling it in the mouth. And then the next guys are queuing up and whoever lands the bottle, they then get to, you know, chomp at this food. And these are all overweight Africans. These are not your skinny, typical Africans, donate a pound a day Africans. These are proper, big, heavy set Africans. And I just think, why do people get so excited for food? It is beyond me. I've never been excited to eat anything in my life. I've eaten great things in my life. I've been to the top restaurants in the world. I've eaten any food that you could say is, oh, I'd love to try that. I've tried it. You know, other than pork, I don't eat pork. But I've had every single thing in the world I've tried. Like, there's nothing out there that I'm going to think, hmm, I've never tried that before. Okay, yeah, it might be cooked by a particular chef or a Michelin store or whatever. Yeah, granted, there's things out there. But food's food. I'm never going to look at food with that kind of a desire. It is beyond me that people find, first of all, people find those videos funny. I cringe watching that kind of stuff. And secondly, like, who are these people and why are you treating food like that? Food should never, ever be treated like that. I'm not here to preach Islamic sermon or anything like that. You should never look at food with those lustful eyes. It's like, oh yeah, amazing. Look at me, I'm eating all this rice and all this. It's insane. It is absolutely insane to me. It's crazy that people have that kind of a relationship with food. And the other people watching it thinking, oh, I'd love to eat that. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on that kind of. Crazy. Maybe I'm different, I don't know. But I will tell you one thing. Nobody needs to eat that much food. We need to eat minimal food to survive. And that is it. This is, remember, you're following this channel for longevity. This is going to teach you some discipline. So right now we are 10, 11 days in. We've got, well, I've only got, this is Friday today for me. So I've got three more days to go. But obviously I'm going to show you the, yeah, sorry. I've got two more days to go Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday. So technically there's three more days to go. Three more days to go. You guys are going to learn exactly what I'm going to be doing the next three days as well. But you just need to keep disciplined. It's actually not that hard. You either hire a coach to tell you exactly what to do so you stay on plan. If you want to hire a coach, the link is in the description. And that is basically it. You hire a coach, he keeps you on track. You hire a coach, he's going to teach you exactly what foods do what. Because most people out there aren't educated enough about food. And don't count calories. Don't be... I don't even, Listen, that's another video. I don't even want to get into that. First thing people say to me, oh, I've had this many calories and I'm just thinking, oh my God, this guy has no idea about food. And it's not your fault. It is not your fault because all you listen to is the media. All you listen to is the ill-advised coach about calories. Calories are absolute garbage. They don't mean anything to any of my guys. If you are one of my guys, please vouch for me. I've never got you to count a calorie ever. If you wanted more food, we picked the right type of food. You wanted to eat less food, we picked the right type of food to cut out. There is never a time or a place to count calories if you know exactly what to eat and when to eat it. Hopefully this video brought you some value. Please comment down below and tell me about your bad train experiences and like the video.